It was a requirement for a class to do uh, an externship of some sort, and I always thought, I always loved politics, and um, I just went on to the Senate.gov, applied to uh, Senator uh, Tom Carper's Washington, D.C. office as a legislative intern, and then the process went on from there. I was summoned for an interview, and I went through the interview process, and then they offered me an internship, and I, I accepted it. I think the first time I met Barnett, I think he was sitting down, we have like a row in our office, and we call it intern row. They call it skid row, but actually it's quite nice. <laughs> but I think I walked back and we had a new crop of interns, and uh, I just remember reaching down to shake hands with him, and he just started standing up, <laughs> and he just kept going. <laughs> They're all, uh, uh, almost all college students, and they're smart and they have good work ethic, and they do a lot of research. On a day-to-day -day basis, things could change when the Senate is in session and out of session. So when they're in session, all the senators are probably there in D.C., but when they're out of session, they might be in their home states doing things, and your responsibilities change. Sometimes they'll go with me to committee hearings. Uh, sometimes we'll put them out on the front desk, which is what we call it, our uh, front line of defense. <laughs> I was responsible for drafting letters that would be sent out to constituents, giving tours of the Capitol building. I had a multitude of responsibilities and it was, it was pretty unique. We treat them like family. And we treat them the way Golden Rule, treat them the way that we would want to be treated. And um, uh, take them to, to lunch in the Senate dining room, that kind of thing. And then they sleep a lot. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Only Barnett. <laughs> connections you can build from the University of Delaware has been tremendous. There's not many universities where teachers are best friends with the vice presidents or former classmates with the vice presidents have taught the governors of the state. The classes are, they're tough, they really challenge your mind intellectually. I think that's what's made so much success with individuals transforming into the political realm with uh, degrees from the University of Delaware. I find that people who are uh, athletes actually have a leg up on, uh, on running for office because they're more of a team spirit and they're easy, uh, they find it easier to meet people. He's got great aspirations of who he wants to be after college, kind of joke around with him. He's the mayor of Newark and everybody knows him. You know, people love him, people support him, people are excited when he's out there on the court. He's had uh, probably some ups and downs basketball wise and I love the, the uh, senior presence that he's provided that group. But he knows at some point the ball is going to stop bouncing and he's got to rely on his education and he's really take advantage of you know, connections and staying in contact with people that can help him down the road, you know, whether he's a politician, whether he wants to be a lawyer. And again, he's got a bright, bright future ahead of him. I'm really excited about who he can become as a person. Upon graduation, I'm, en I'm enrolling in law school and then I plan to practice law for a few years to segue into a political career. My dream job, uh, I would love to be a governor of Pennsylvania. Uh, I love that state. I love the history of PA, it's, it's, it's what's raised me, and then who knows, maybe I'll try to make a run at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue.